today's episodes i will be discussing the mirabal sisters a story of bravery that gave women all over the world a voice against violence now stay tuned for the intro Welcome to the channel. For those who are returning, welcome back. And for those who are new, I am your host, Maria, and I invite you to join us living the dream Dominican Republic. In this channel, we record our journey retiring from the United States and relocating to the Dominican Republic. And in this episode, I will be discussing a small history of the DR. And it is important for me to understand their history as it is to understand the history from here in the U.S. as DRs where we intend on spending the rest of our lives. The history, culture, celebrations, why they do the things they do, their traditions, is important to learn as we will be joining their country and their traditions and I would love to take part of all their celebrations. Now I have a small disclosure to make before we get started. The history, the story of the Imiraba sisters, a very long one, it's very big. I tried to brief it up as much as I possibly can but I do invite you to please research, look up, and just learn more of how the United States was involved in the uprising and downfall of Trujillo when it comes to the history of the Mirabal sisters. I will leave a couple of links in the description below so that way if you are interested in learning more or just finding out more information of the United States, I invite you to go ahead and read them. Now let's get into the story. Before we start, I have my cheat sheet here. So yes, I will be reading the story because there's no way my brain was gonna remember the all the details and the long story. But and I don't I don't have anything fancy to hold up the paper while I read to you. But I will be inserting um, photo clips along the story so that way you can have a clear vision of who I am speaking about. So, but I would like to start by introducing the sisters. There are four of them three who unfortunately sacrificed with their lives and the last one who did survive the tragedy what she believed that her her sacrifice was to live to tell their story so that starts with the sisters they were born in ojo de agua salcedo dominican republic and we're gonna they lived in on a prosperous farm let's try that again the sisters were born in Ojo de Agua, Salcedo, Dominican Republic. They lived on a prosperous farm where they operate a coffee mill and a general store. The sisters, there's four, Patria, born in 1924, Belgica, who was known as Dede, born in 1925, Minerva, the one that Trujillo fixated on, she was born in 1926, and the youngest of them all was Maria Teresa, with her, she's known for her long, beautiful hair, she was born in 1935. Their parents, Enrique Mirabal and Mercedes Reyes. And also, the sisters did have a brother born in 1927. However, he passed away just at a few days old. Now, I'm going to start with the oldest, Patria. She, again, born in 1924. She was able to graduate with a bachelor's in social studies in 1946. She did marry Pedro in 1941, and they would have four children. Her husband also shared the same political views as she did. Now, Belgica, known as Dede, she was the lone survivor. She was born in 1925, and she was the um, the one who survived their massacre of Truji, ordered by Trujillo. She did attend college, but did not graduate. After her father passed, she took charge of the, the business. So she took not only charge of the business, but also of the family accounts. So the accounting of the family, the economic um, status of the family, she handled all of that. Now, she also did form of, have her own family. She married Hyman in 1948, and they had three children. They eventually did divorce. It is stated that they divorced due to economical differences. I'm sure she was very strong-minded as she was the one in charge of her family's financial financials, and they must have clashed heads. It was 1948 at the time. One of her children would become VP of the Dominican Republic from 1996 to the year 2000, and his name is Jaime David. Now, Minerva, the one that Trujillo just fell in love with, 
she was born in 1926 and unfortunately became his obsession through his obsession. She studied law, but was never allowed to practice. Not nor was given her license because Trujillo denied her of this privilege because she wouldn't correspond to him. Now she married Manolo in 1955 and he and he also studied law inclusive that's where they met they met in college but he would end up getting his um not only his law degree his license to practice. He also shared with her the same political views as she made it known to him from the very get-go if we don't think alike in reference to Trujillo and how to take him down, they would never get together. So he did do that. One of her conditions to marry him was of a political view and they had two children. And the youngest, Maria Teresa, um, born in 1935, <laughs> her parents named her a, um, a beautiful surprise or a beautiful gift, more of a surprise gift. She would get her bachelor's in mathematics and marry Leonardo in, not Leonardo, Leandro in 1959, and they had one daughter. Now, let me explain to you just a bit of Rafael Torrillo. He was a dic the dictator of the Dominican Republic for many decades, and he was assassinated in 1961. He became president of the DR in 1930 and held office until 1938 when he chose a successful that he a successor that he can monopolize monopolize he refused he resumed his position in 1942 until 1952 but then continued to rule on until the day of his assassin assassin which was may 30th 1961. trujillo born in 1891 hired someone to rewrite his family history. So the true facts of his background are not certain. They're saying that as a teenager, he joined a gang and, a, and had a string of crimes. And by 1916, he would marry his first wife, Amid, Amin, Amita, and they would have two daughters. Due to his two daughters, he would become a family man and decided, okay, that's the end of my criminal activities and will actually go hold, to hold a steady job. And on one of his careers in 1916, he will be promoted promoted from a ware position to in a sugar plantation to be a private policeman on the plantation in 1919. So in 1919, when the U.S. was occupying the Dominican Republic, they offered him the opportunity to train him as an officer for the country for the first municipality police force the constabulary guard. So he quickly rose in ranks and in 1924 was made second in command of guard in and in 1925, he was promoted to commander in chief. In 1930, the Dominican president, Horacio Vasquez was facing revolt and a provisional government was established. Through his name was put in as a candidate for new presidential elections. So he was one of them. During the campaign, however, Trujillo secretly organized a police force to torture and murder, and murder supporters of the opposite candidate. Of course, Trujillo would win the elections because God forbid you should go against him. Shortly after winning the elections, DR capital of Santo Domingo was hit by a devastating hurricane. He would take advantage of the de disaster and impose martial law on citizens. He even imposed emergency taxes, which seized bank accounts of his opposition. He spent six years renovating the city and building several monuments in his honor, and he even renaming Santo Domingo to Ciudad Trujillo, which is city Trujillo. So Santo Domingo is the capital of the Dominican Republic. In this time, he called it Ciudad Trujillo. All of the women were very well educated, the women of the Mirabal sisters. So they were all very well educated, as I had mentioned earlier. And I wanted you to understand is they were of, they were a family of money because of their, their businesses. So because of their coffee, their general mill, they were very well educated. That's one thing their father had. He insisted that they get a good education, even if they were females. Um, they did come from a high society, including well-known in the political parties. Their tragedy became began when Mirabal, 
attended a reception that was held for Trujillo. She wanted to know who he was because she, while she was in college, she heard all the stories, the tragedies that he had put her friend's family through. So the friends that she made in college. This is when she saw her, this is when he saw her and fixated on her. He was so intrigued that he ordered another party to be held and instructed that her family be invited. Her family did attend as it would be a disrespect for him to invite a family and they not attend. So that's why she did, her and her family did attend the second reception in his honor. So everyone attended except her mother as she was not feeling well. And during the party, Trujillo invited her to dance and she did oblige and he would, of course, tell her, her his intent with her and inform and she would inform him that she does not share his same political views. At the end of the dance, she, uh, Minerva went up to her father and said that she wished to leave the party because she was feeling uncomfortable due to all the intent that Trujillo was making known to her. So everyone got up and left and of course, this offended Trujillo because at, for that era, it was considered a disrespect for any guest to leave a party before Rafael Trujillo. And he ordered that her father, Minerva, and everyone who assisted the party with him, which is the family, her sisters, all be arrested. And they were, they were incarcerated. They were all incarcerated except the mom because she wasn't at the party. Now, due that the Minerva family is a well-known family, they were able to speak to to a few political parties and they were able to get in contact with Trujillo's brother and Trujillo's brothers was the one who eventually uh, um, convinced him, Rafael, to release the family from jail. But um, even though he did do that, he had the family watched and on several occasions and every chance he got, he would incarcerate not only the women, but also their father as a form of torture to show that he is the one with power and he is the one who says goes does what they're what he says so it, they're saying that Enrique the women's dad who passed away at a young age he was in his early 50s I believe it's what I read that he died due to a heart attack because he was under so much stress of constantly being incarcerated and his girls being in the line of danger that they said that he died due to a severe heart attack because the three women and their husband played a vital role in the attempt to bring down Trujillo's regime, he had him, he had him followed. In one occasion, the husbands of the Minerva, Minerva, Patria and Maria Teresa were being held in prison located in Puerto Plata, which is approximately a two hour drive from Mojo de Agua. And the women were followed on their return trip. Now, Dede, which is the second oldest, she stayed home with all the kids. She was, I believe it was a total of like a seven of them. She stayed home with all the kids, her and the mother, the um, Mercedes. So Mercedes and Dede were home with the, all the children because the ladies were visiting their husband. Now, Patria's husband was not incarcerated because Patria and her husband were not involved in the revolt against Trujillo. They were, they stayed away and they, they told their sister, Listen, I'll support you in the sense that I will take care of your children. I will so help you sew whatever you need to be sewn, but I will not participate in any of the rallies or revolts against Trujillo, nor did her husband. So that's why her husband wasn't incarcerated. Only Patria Minervas and Maria Teresa's husband were incarcerated. So one of the trips that they made up to the prison because they they understood the importance to keep visiting their husband, even though it was a two hour ride. And mind you, and for that time, to that time, the roads wasn't, they weren't paved roads. They, I'm sure they had one or two, but it wasn't all paved roads. They were more of dirt roads. So they would make it a point to go visit their husband minimum once a week to encourage them, to give them strength, to keep moving forward. So Trujillo, the women were being followed on their way back home from Puerto Plata to Ojo de Agua. So it's basically all mountains. So they were going through the mountains at that time. They were being followed because Trujillo understood that on June 14, there was an, a movement called the Occupation of June 14. So the sisters and the chauffeur Rufino de la Cruz were being followed basically 
taken at, against their will. They were beaten, tortured, strangled, and of course, eventually they, they did get killed. So Trujillo agents put their bodies back inside the vehicle that they were in, which was a Jeep at the time. They put and pushed the car with the bodies inside off the cliff. And when I tell you it's a cliff, it's a cliff. I'll, I'm sure I will be inserting the monument because they did do a monument for them. And you'll see the how how high the mountain is. In any event, that road right now is called the touristic route of Gregorio Luperon, which is one of um, another historic character of the Dominican Republic. So he, the age, Trujillo's ancient agents pushed the vehicle off the cliff to make it seem like a tragic accident and their bodies were discovered on november 25 november 25th 1960. the assassination of the mirabal sisters was more than the dominicans would be able to handle or take and because of this they ambushed trujillo and killed him on his way to his mistress house on may 30th 1961. He took pride in himself for being pro-women and inclusive. He put one of the first female delegates from any country into the United Nations in 1945 because he held himself on such high progress that the fact that he failed to protect women is what led to the ambush. So he was blabbering, I would say, or saying that he's pro-women and this is what he did, but yet he had these three females killed. Thank you for staying with me this far. As I previously mentioned, I tried to keep the story as short as possible, but the history is so big and interesting. The United States had a lot to do with putting Trujillo into power and as well as removing him. I do recommend that you either read or search here on YouTube more information. And again, I will try to leave the links on the history on how the CIA, Eisenhower, JFK, they all had influences on not only putting Trujillo into power, but also removing him. And they're very quite interesting stories. Hi everyone, welcome back. Listen, as I was editing this, I realized, wait a minute, I didn't tell you guys that the Mirabal sisters' home, childhood, well, their second home, they it became a museum. I, I did neglect to tell you that. So the home that where the all the seven children were raised, that's the museum that home became a museum because remember after the ladies died and their husbands Dede and the mom Mercedes their grandma took care of the children and raised the children they raised it in that home and that home now is known as a museum for the sisters it's a very beautiful home spacious home huge property lot so those ch children were very well taken care of not only because of that I'm sure they were very loved that's why I'm saying that but in any event, I recommend and that whenever you get a chance to visit the Dominican Republic, and if you're in the country, decide to go ahead and visit that, that museum. It's a gorgeous museum. I will be showing you guys pictures. Um, for the next series I have in mind, I do have coming up this week, it's a joyful one. So you guys know, we started building our retirement home in DR. The foundation is done and they sent us some pictures and images and I will be inviting you guys to see that next. So please stay tuned and alert for the next video, which I hope to be putting up shortly. I know it's been a big lapse. Um, unfortunately, I, I explained to you guys the reason why I do that before, but if you found this information very interesting, I invite you to please hit the like button. And if you're interested in joining us on our journey, retiring from the United States and relocating to the Dominican Republic, I invite you to hit the subscribe button and that notification bell. That way you know what's going on. And please leave comments and questions. I like interacting with you guys. It makes my day. And I'm going to ask you again. Hopefully you guys can hit that subscribe button because I'm waiting for my 4K camera. I'm going there shortly. Shortly. I will be there very soon. It's going slow, but we'll get there. I believe we will. <laughs> Have a good one. Be safe. Living the dream. Dominican Republic.